We believe that videos, images, words, and sounds have the absolute power to inform, inspire, and entertain. We are united under the virtues of safety and knowledge. We are a training community of learners and teachers who encourage and energize each other to achieve greatness. We are pilots, videographers, photographers, freelancers, business owners, enthusiasts, experts, and apprentices. We are creators. We are the Drone Youth. Hey everyone, and welcome to another awesome episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. And I'm Rob, and you're listening to episode 292. And thank you very much for listening in. We really appreciate you spending a few minutes of your day with us. We do, and we know it's the end of the week, so you're probably going to have a good weekend getting out there flying. If you really need that confidence to fly and do the cool moves, the obstacle shots, the cinematic stuff... There's one good place to really learn how to do that. That is Drone U. Anyway, guys, welcome to the show. If you have a question, go to askdroneu.com. Upload your question. Please. Gotta say, uh, I love, 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 love what we're seeing on Instagram. Please give us a tag at the Drone U, and we will repost your photos, show them, and share them to the world. You'll probably get a few followers out of it. I will say, there have been some people who have been following us from the beginning who now have a substantial uh, number of followers. And that is a lot of fun to help people grow their following Absolutely. through our following. It really is cool. We dig that. Absolutely, guys. So, we got a cool question today. It's about the cold weather, Rob. It's not that cold here, but it may be cold elsewhere. Yeah, I'm sure it is cold elsewhere. We're really, really glad that we live in the Southwest because it's beautiful here. Expecting a little bit of rain, but nothing major. And so, uh, we're wishing you sunny, windless weather like we're having, although the wind's coming. It is coming. But yeah, it is definitely cold other places in the country and, and in fact, in the world. So, what do we have for these people? Well, today's question is brought to you by... Are you a drone pilot? Are you operating under a Section 353 exemption? Then you may be familiar with Item 27, which requires you to get a property release for every flight over property. Legal Flyer is an app for iPhone and iPad that helps you create professional property releases in less time than it takes to do a pre-flight check. You can add your pilot info, you can sign in, hand it to the property owner for their signature. But wait a second. Legal Flyer's advanced integration automatically adds latitude, longitude, and even altitude. Then add a panorama straight from the app. Everything drops into a single page PDF you can share with a single tap. It's compliance at light speed. Visit LegalFlyer.com for more information or get it straight from the app store. Legal Flyer, property releases for professional drone pilots. Hey Drone You, this is Chris out of Northern Wyoming. Before asking my question, I want to say thank you for recommending the PrepWare Sports app. It has been a very helpful tool in studying for my pilot's license. Though I must warn my fellow iOS users, the app costs $10 as opposed to the $5 that you pay on other devices. I want to ask about the latest Phantom 3 update. I have heard it is supposed to increase cold weather performance and flight time. Have you made the update, and if so, did you see any flight improvement? Also, are there any known issues with the update? Thanks for everything you do for the community, and have a great day. Well, Chris, so he's in a cold area, potentially, Wyoming. I think it's very cold. Definitely cold up there. You know, I find it interesting, though. The app that he's talking about, the one that we give people um, when they're training for to get their pilot's license for the 333, the sport app, this one. Right. Um, I thought I only paid $5 for it, but 5 10 bucks. Um, if you take that test at least 20 times uh, there's n- and you get 90% or above uh, the last couple times you take it, mm-hmm. there's no way you'll fail the written test. It's, right. just, it's just proof. Now, so even if it's 10 bucks, well worth it. Absolutely well worth it. Um, now, here's the, uh, the question of the day, the Phantom 3 firmware update. Yep. So what is he talking about? Well, what he's talking about is that in the firmware, because there's a lot of new people flying drones that don't get educated... And then just keep flying. Gosh, we hear stories all the time. Every and then day. They crash. Every day. And then they blame it on DJI. <laughs> and this is how many Fs I care. Stop. Okay, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, in all actuality, um I have not done the update um myself because I don't want the new geofencing crap on my on my f- uh, Phantom 3. I think there's a there's a lot of value in actually not having that on uh, your drone because it's just another step of, of regulatory BS that again has uh, very little if no 
uh, fundamental basis in law itself. Uh, anyway, that being said, uh, as far as the battery issues itself, if you take care of your batteries, the chances of you having a critical battery error are very low. Um, now, if you don't take care of your batteries, uh, meaning that you're not charging them uh, within a day or two of flying them, flying those particular batteries, you're not keeping them warm before you go out and fly, um, you're not giving them a full charge, you are charging the battery when it's too hot or it's too cold. Um, there are a couple things that you know you can really do that are going to screw screw up your battery. It's going to cause you to have a battery failure warning, mm -hmm. and you're going to have the drone drop out of the sky. Now, the new firmware is supposed to say, oh, I notice you're having battery problems, and I'm going to slow you down to five meters per second of full hmm. speed. Um, now, for me, I don't have the luxury of, of shooting stuff and going that slow. Right. Uh, I normally am flying at double that speed. Um, but here's the thing. If you take care of your batteries, you will not have this problem. Um, and I say that with uh, relative confidence because I have taken care of my equipment and I have never had this problem. I have had other people have the problem. And then when we go through kind of a diagnosis of, uh, w okay, what did you do to your batteries before you did this? Well, I haven't charged my batteries in four days. Okay. Well, they start depleting themselves after a couple of days. Right. Um, did you warm the battery up to say 70 degrees uh, before you went outside in the cold? No, I didn't do that. Did you keep your batteries warm in the car when you were flying outside? No, they were outside in my case. Okay. Those things are definitely going to cause you to have a battery failure. Now, there are going to be uh, extrin extrinsic circumstances. Extenuating? Another word, yes. Uh, extrinsic. <laughs> okay. Ext Outside. Correct. Thank you. Uh, circumstances <laughs> that could cause you to have a battery failure. Um, but what, you know, here's another thing. What should you do if you have a battery failure? What's the fastest way to bring the drone down, Rob? The fast, you, you mean to come down in a circular motion? Is that what you're like referring to? Like a tornado? To? Like a tornado. That's right. Now, where yeah. would someone learn how to do that? There's this little thing called the Don't Crash course that I've heard about. Hmm. I've never heard of that before. Hmm. Well, maybe you should check it out, Paul, because I, I don't want you to crash. Probably a good idea. Yeah, I think anyway, you should. 90 minutes of how not to crash. And battery maintenance is something that we go over, and I recommend that you check it out. Um, now again, keeping those batteries warm is really critical to flying in the cold. Whether you put them on your dashboard, use a Pelletier device, we've talked about that. The thing is, remember, you don't wanna shock the battery. You don't want it to go from cold to warm really quickly as Andrew Baker, our uh, resident friend who works at Honeywell in the mm -hmm. avionics software division. Um, it, it's really critical that we warm this battery up gradually. We don't really wanna shock it. Um, we also wanna make sure that we're doing our deep cycle or our power cycles or our calibrating of the battery every 10 flights. That's really crucial. Right. And you never want to leave batteries um, stored really for longer than two weeks. I mean, you want to be flying consistently. If you're not flying more consistently than two weeks, why do you even have a drone? Well, yeah, I suppose. I mean, certainly people buy drones and they have all these great intentions and then life takes over, busy, work, whatever. But maybe they have to travel for work, something. But anyways. Well, it's just like that decision. If you're going to go f into business for yourself, you have to leap into it. You can't just like, you know, tiptoe into the water. You got to jump in. True. Yeah. Well, that's absolutely true. So as it relates to the um, the Phantom, the update, the firmware update, is this really the primary benefit? The la Now, if he's talking about the last firmware update that there was, yes, that was the primary benefit. Okay. It was to try to mitigate um, critical battery failures Got it. by limiting the overall flight speed. So here's the thing. If you're flying in the cold, don't try to you know go super fast. That, that in initial or excuse me, that initial amperage draw is what would ca cause one of the cells to essentially become out of alignment, which what do I mean by out of alignment, that they're out of, say, 10 milliamps, or excuse me, 10 millivolts. It's millivolts, yeah. So if we're at, say, 4.1 volts uh, on cell one, we want to be between 4.09 and 4. Point, really, from what I've heard, is, to, is about 6 tenths to... Uh, ten, well, yeah, it's what I've heard. I've heard two different things. I'll just be completely honest because I've seen both things happen. 
One is that if you're if you have a 6S battery, each cell should be at 4.1 volts, right? Okay. But really, the more important fact is that each cell is within a specific margin of error of voltage right. to the other cells. Okay. If you have one cell that has too little voltage or too much voltage, you're going to get a battery warning, and your drone will not want to fly, and the chances of you crashing are actually significantly higher. Okay. So you were really want to make sure that if you have, say, cell one is 4.1, that you've got this margin of error from 4.09 to 4.15. Uh, some people have said, well, you can even go, say you're at 4.1, your other cell can be at 4.2. I think that's at the high end of the spectrum where you're still going to have a safely operating battery. Okay. Um, from my experience is really if, you, if you're, and I'm using just 4.1 as a, a baseline number. I'm not using it as, oh, it means something. I'm just saying 4.1 right. to give people a mathematical example of what your margin of error, your endpoints for safe cell life and safe cells in your battery, uh, how that works, essentially. I understand. So would it be helpful for somebody before they actually take off to let their drone just warm up? Like well, with the Phantom 3, I mean, you have to let the IMU warm up. And okay. that's another little tip and trick for you guys. Um, if you do an IMU calibration in the cold, uh, so you take your drone outside, you put it on a flat surface, you do your IMU calibration on flat level surface, and it's 40 degrees outside, your startup time, your IMU startup time will be shorter than if you were to do your IMU calibration inside where it's mm -hmm. actually warmer. Makes sense. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, very interesting. Little nuances. Cool. Or you could just move somewhere where it's warmer. Like Arizona. Arizona. Even New Mexico. Eh. It's f well, I guess it's March now. But in February, our trees were blooming. Yeah, it's weird. You don't like it, huh? No, I like I like the green. I actually love the green because New Mexico is one of the rare places where the uh, the brown is very evident in the winter. <laughs> yes, there's it no is. like green saving grace. It's just brown. We have a lot of brown. We do have evergreens. But I will say, if you know when someone comes out to New Mexico and they see the brown, if that like negatively affects their personality, I think it showcases a weak personality or an inability to adapt. Because, well. Go ahead. You because, because if you learn to just be, if you learn to be happy with what you have or new places, experiencing yeah. new things, I think uh, it can really broaden your horizons and I think it can really uh, add gratitude and value to your life. And I think overall you'd be happier. No, I think that's true. I think what happens with a lot of people, particularly those like yourself who come from the East or maybe the South, anywhere that it's really, really green, they come here and it is a culture shock. I mean, it's a shock to the system to have so much brown, if you will. I think it's a beautiful brown, but nonetheless... It grows on people. I think probably seven, eight out of ten people that we hear that story from, like, it's so brown. It doesn't take long for them to learn to love New Mexico. That's true. That is very true. Um, so come on out. Everybody's like, welcome. The funny thing is I like the red rock here. You know, it's beautiful. Beautiful. Definitely yeah, for beautiful. Sure. Um, so Phantom 3 firmware upgrade to summarize it. Now I haven't done it. Um, I don't plan to do it. Take care of your batteries. Uh, for new guys, you should probably do it, though. Uh, but if you you know really want to mitigate battery problems, don't go super hard on the throttle. Don't go super crazy on your roll or your speed. You know if you limit the amperage draw from the battery, that your uh, uh, propensity for problems will go down. Absolutely makes sense. Cool. Yeah, very much so. So if you guys have a question, ask DroneU.com. Send in those funky accents. We love those. We have a lot of fun with those. We do. Send them our way. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do that get this delivered to your inbox every single day without having to think about it. Share us. That helps us a it's tremendous really amount. It's convenient. Yeah. It is convenient. It is. Absolutely. You don't have it to go is. chasing it down, thinking, oh, I mean, it's funny what we consider work now, like hitting the open the app button. <laughs> but nonetheless, if it's in your inbox, that's even easier. Anyway, guys, we really appreciate it. If you would, write us a review. If you think we've provided you value, tell a friend. That's all we ask. That's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. And I'm Rob. And this is Ask Drone You. We believe that videos, images, words, and sounds have the absolute power to inform, inspire, and entertain. We are united under the virtues of safety and knowledge. We are a training community of learners and teachers who encourage and energize each other to achieve greatness. We are pilots, videographers, photographers, freelancers, business owners, enthusiasts, experts, and apprentices. We are creators. We are the Drone Youth.